Hello, everyone. Let me make sure that my my audio is good. Yeah, I think it's good. Can you hear me? I was just recording, so now I am. That's why I got all the makeup on. All the makeup's on. What's up, everyone? Craig, Top Brass, Duke, Dean. Who else? Who else? Who else? You guys were, I saw something about popcorn. <laughs> it's not popcorn tonight. It's salmon. I actually made dinner tonight from scratch. So pardon me. Watch up, Brian. I'm sorry. I'm always eating when you guys are, when you guys are watching because it's dinner time and I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm sure you can hear that in the mic though. I'm, I'm sure it's very annoying. William and Holly checking in. What's up? What's up, Aaron? Hmm. I was filming tonight. I had my red on. All right. You had salmon too. I love salmon. I cooked this really good tonight too. It's not, it's not overdone at all. It's still very chewy on the center. Mmm. It's my favorite. Salmon is my favorite fish. I love how you're just chilling eating dinner. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> welcome to my lives. <laughs> People are new here. They're like, what, do, what is she doing? She eats and talks about women. And that's what she does. Mmm. All right, let's get a couple questions in and then we'll get into the subject matter. Because I want to talk about what creates desire. What creates true desire within women? What is it that we really are truly looking for from the men in our life? That seems to be the, the question that every man wants an answer to. Good evening, Edward. Good evening, Eric. What's up, Brian? Juan. Hey, Katie. I haven't seen you in a while. What's up, John? How are we doing? Okay. Let me just do one thing before I start. <clears throat> Okay, I had to turn something on really quick. It's all good. I'm finishing a late supper myself. I need to try a Minnesota Wally. Wally is the best. I don't know what Wally is. What's up, old man hawk? Do you believe social media dating apps and the internet give a false impression? Okay. You guys are going to have to super chat me. These um, <clears throat> these are coming in really fast. Hey, Sarah. So it was an interesting night last night. Hope you're doing well. What happened last night? <laughs> what? You can't leave us hanging. Banter, mystery, excitement, growth, smell good, laughter are my tools to create desire. Okay. My opinion is a woman desires a man who is confident and has a purpose. You're one of the few content creators I actually enjoy watching. Humble. I like it. Thank you. That's very kind of you. I would say so. I think I'm I'm humble. It depends on the woman and even that she can change her mind at any second. That is true. But for the most part, there are kind of common things that keep a woman intrigued or at least there's some desire levers that you can pull. All right. <clears throat> so let's talk about the first one. And if the women are in the comments, I think that they can chime in. And if they agree with me, they can tell me. So the things that you're all saying are very, very true in the comment section. Definitely like safety, protection, being a provider, having a vision. Um, but if you can kind of think back 
to if you've had a woman in your life or if you were dating or if you're a dad, this is really good with daughters to think about, you know, if you had a relationship with, with a daughter, a lot of the time for whatever reason, women, women create, like to create anxiety within, within ourselves. We definitely have the, the tendency to be a little bit more anxious than men. So I learned this concept a, a really long time ago from, uh, I believe it, I think it's Glover who coined this, this, this concept. Um, but one of the things that, and, and uh, Corey Wayne, actually, were the two guys that talked about this. And then it was also solidified by Esther Perel. So there's these three kind of people that I heard this concept from that they all kind of say the same thing, but in different ways. So what they say is that in order to kind of tingle a woman in all the right places, there has to be a sense of kind of an anticipatory lag with her. And what I mean by that is when you create a little suspense within the relationship, although women might say that they don't like it or they may kind of go, oh, no, you know, just tell me, you know, when you say to someone, I will tell you something someday, but not, you know, now is not the time. Have you ever said that to anyone and a woman or has anyone said that to you? And it, and it makes you kind of crazy because you want to know, you're like, what, what is it? I want to know, like, don't, don't do that to me. Right. Women love that. I think people in general love that. Men, I don't know as much because you guys, you guys don't care as much about anticipation or, or the, the lack there of anticipation. Y'all are, you know, you're, you're pretty simple. I think you, you're more worried about your job, your work, your, your provider. You could probably care less, um, as much as a woman providing you or as you providing this to a woman. So really there's always, if you've been married for a long time, I think you might know this, or if you're in my comment section or if you're watching right now, I'd love to hear your feedback on how you've created a, a sense of anticipation in the relationship and a sense of, and a sense of delayed gratification. So it could mean that you are going to, you kind of suggest you're going to take her somewhere without her knowing you could be on a first date and you could say some, you know, you could have the first date planned, but in the back of your mind, have something or somewhere to go on the second date or on the second location. So say like a date is going well and. Oh, okay. You guys have some good questions. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep talking, but I'll go and answer the questions. Um, I think that you could, on the first date, right, you could be having your first date set up and then 30 or 40 minutes in, if it's going well, you know, one time I had a guy say, uh, yeah, let's, let's, I have another, I have another idea for us. Let's go somewhere, like just get in the car or let's walk to somewhere else and let's go get dessert or let's go do something else. But she doesn't really know. She doesn't know where you're going. She kind of has to trust you. And that creates this kind of idea of positive emotional tension within women. Again, they might say that they don't like it, but they actually really do like it because it's the, the, the element of surprise and of them getting there, it, it, it creates just excitement within us. Esther Perel is an amazing, amazing mentor. I've been following her for many, many years. I read her book called Dating in Captivity. And the book is phen phenomenal. It talks all about how to keep romance alive within a time that we are captive in relationships, right? Versus, versus previous times and previous generations and in previous cultures where men would leave for months at a time to go fight in wars, or they would leave for days at a time. 
and then they would come back. Um, that was creating a sense of longing for each other. So Esther Perel studied these things and she looked at three different things that creates like amazing attraction within, within a relationship. And one of them was distance. The other one was a sense of anticipation, a sense of adventure. And then the other, the other component was the other component was seeing your partner in a new light. So seeing them on stage, seeing them take up a, a speaking engagement, seeing them practice an instrument or take up an instrument, seeing them uh, learn a new language, like doing something to further yourself is very attractive to the other person because it shows that you're not staying stagnant. It shows that you're not just okay with status quo in your life. You're doing something to further yourself personally, whether it's professionally, you know, just kind of doing things to kind of keep the relationship exciting and anticipatory. So the anticipation is a big one. You could create anticipation in text message. You know, you could say something about, Hey, I like, I just had something happen and I can't wait to tell you about it later. It may not be, it may not be anything crazy. It may not be anything super, super exciting or super different, but creating that anticipation within the text message or, Hey babe, there's this place that I just drove by and I'm going to take you to that on Friday night, but it's going to be a surprise. I can't tell you what it is. Um, Oh, is somebody being a dumb butt? Just ban them. We don't need that. Okay. So what are your, some of your questions on this? I, I need to email you a text that I got sent last night. I think the girl that I've been talking to just emotionally dumped on me and I want your insight. Please do. I can't, I would love to see that. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, Okay. Let's go back. What kind of questions do you guys have? Just, you're going to have to super chat guys. Cause I'm on my teaching. I'm teaching tonight. If you want just super chat, if it's a couple dollars, I can go back and I can look at the comment, but I can't, I, I'm like in teaching mode tonight. Okay. Five things that create desire for women. So let's talk about the dreaded emotional connection that you guys all are so confused about when it comes to number two, emotional connection. What does that mean? That does not mean when it comes to sending you an email, Josh, sending you an email, that's emotionally dumping versus emotional connection. Oh, so how do you create emotional connection within a woman? Oh, my wife loves overnight trips to anywhere. Yes, a trip is a great way to create anticipation. When it comes to emotional connection with a woman, think about it like this. Basically, she wants you to get on the roller coaster with her. She wants you to go on the ride, go on the ride wherever she goes. And she just wants you to listen. She wants you to ask deeper questions such as, why are you, wh wh why is that important to you? I heard a question the other day that nobody has ever asked me before. I think as a guy, nobody has ever asked me. Uh, and, and it's been, and it's been a long time. Um, so what they asked me was Josh, did you slow the comments down? You can, you can, you can make them go a little faster than that, that they're like really slow now. Okay. What's up Floyd? All right. Um, shoot. I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Emotional connection, emotional connection. Oh shoot. I lost my train of thought. Okay. So you're going on the roller coaster ride with, oh, 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 the one question that somebody has not asked me. Okay. So I thought this was such a brilliant question. I was scrolling on some TikTok or scrolling on some Instagram. And I thought, this is such a good question that nobody's asked me. 
Um, it is, what is something that you would love to brag about, but you just haven't had the opportunity to because you're reserved or because you don't want to sound conceited? What is that? Tell me what that is. So if you ask a woman that, that is such a cool question because she, most of the time for me, like I've never been asked that question and I don't like to brag because I'm kind of a modest person. I'm kind of a, you know, I don't, I don't want to sound conceited, but there's a lot of things that I would love to talk to somebody about or to share what I'm proud of or what I've done in my life without feeling like I'm being judged. So, you know, just something that just some, some deeper questions. The problem sometimes is that you guys don't get the opportunity to practice asking these questions back and forth because you're men and men don't talk to men like this to like, they don't ask these types of questions <laughs> because it's just not how men work. That's not how men bond. Men bond by doing things, by activities. Men can sit in front of a fire and not say anything. That is just not how women work. So really think about, think about questions that that are going to give you more information than one, just whatever surface level. I love to brag about my husband fighting bears. That's really cute. Oh, good, Katie. That's awesome. Oh, okay. So here we go. Here's a perfect example. All right. I been seeing the same last wait, I've been seeing the same girl last two Wednesdays here Wednesdays here in England around 4 p.m. at dark nighttime. How should I approach her? And what should I talk about? Ask for her number. I am always a fan of approaching a woman and just being 100% direct or putting yourself by her in closer proximity or just walking up to her and saying, Hey, I I've seen you a couple of times and I would just kick myself if I didn't get your number or if I didn't come up and talk to you. Hi, my name is, I think guys try and think through all these sorts of scenarios and they try and talk themselves out of it and the right thing to say, the wrong thing to say, what would you say to a stranger that you were walking up to at anywhere? I'll give you an example. For me, I was at the gym the other day and I liked a guy's sweater. It, I wasn't, I didn't think in my head that I was hitting on her or hitting on him. I wasn't thinking about, I'm going to get this guy's number. I wasn't thinking about what do I, what do I say to start up a conversation? I literally just walked up and said, yo, sweet sweater. Like, where did you get that? And then the conversation evolves. You guys have to, you guys sometimes think that, you know, you have to hit on a woman. You have to say the right things, but that's not at all correct. Another example, I was, I, I go to the gym a lot. So I'm, I'm at the gym like two hours a day at least. And so four days a week. Um, so there was another girl who had just really cute pants on really cute pants and I'm not hitting on her. I just said, I really liked her pants. I just complimented her. Like, where do I get those? I love, they were from Lululemon. They were shiny pants. They were adorable. I was in, we, and then that's it. The conversation started from there. It was literally organic. She does typically when you start a conversation with someone, they're not going to just give you one or two, uh, uh one or two word response. You're, they're typically going to open the conversation with, hi, you know, how are you? Or, this happens all the time to me, at least, because I don't think about hitting on people. I don't think about creating a conversation that revolves around an outcome or that revolves around an endpoint. I just literally talk to people. The best quote that I've ever heard from any other dating coach, I have no idea who it was. I heard it at some point was just flirt with the world, flirt with the world. Granted, I am a little bit more extroverted than a lot of, than a lot of people, but I wasn't always like this. I wasn't always 
uh, 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 I had major social anxiety, major social anxiety, but you practice, you practice just creating conversations with people that legitimately there is absolutely no attachment to getting her number. You may not get her number. That, that may just not happen. She may not be interested, but you trying to have a conversation with a stranger is the only thing that you're going to do to try and make that happen. And that could be commenting on, you know, a top that she's wearing on her hair. Another thing that I've had guys come up to me and say, like, you remind me of someone and I don't know who it is, but what celebrity have someone said that you look like? That's a great line, right? Great line to start a conversation with someone. What do you think that I say? Tell me what, what, what do you think? What celebrity do you guys think I look like? You might, you might not guess, but I do get it all the time. Let's hear it. Vivica Fox. Yes, Vanessa. See? Yay. Good job. That was like the, yes. Oh my gosh. You guys got it in like two seconds. Marissa Tomei or Sandra Bullock. Those are the two celebrities that I get all the time. Amazing. I can't believe you guys got that in like two seconds. <laughs> like, what is the, they always joke, Marissa Tomei, like my, my cousin Vinny, my biological clock is ticking like this Vinny. Mm -hmm. Marissa Tomei all the time. So I have guys, I, I would say I get it. Especially when I was a little bit younger, I looked and I had shorter hair and it was curly. Yeah, I, my cousin Vinny came out and, and it was like Marissa Tomei, Marissa Tomei, Marissa Tomei. And I think that it's just such a great, easy way to have a conversation. So now never Mira Servino. I haven't, I haven't heard, I've, I see that, but my nose is different than hers. She's got like a tiny little button nose. Um, <laughs> you mean I can't go up to her and say you're drop dead gorgeous? You could. <laughs> you could. Oh, I heard somebody say the other day. Um, it's so funny. I had someone. Oh, a lot of gentlemen in the chat are concerned of coming off creepy. Yeah. You're not going to come off creepy. You're going to come off creepy because you're not confident. That's why you think you're going to come off creepy because you think that you're bothering her by having a conversation with her. This is why, this is why you have to continue to flirt with the world. Thanks old man Hawk for, for pointing that out. I have never had a guy come up to me that in the, in the back of my mind, I thought he is creepy it's never once happened to me at all. Um, yeah, I, I just don't think that I think that, okay. Okay. I think it comes off creepy because you, it's kind of like, you're like a little snake, like slithering up to her. <laughs> like, Hey, I, you know, Oh, sorry to bother you. Don't ever say that. Don't ever say that. Don't ever disqualify yourself before talking to a woman. Don't no bad boy in the history of bad boys ever said, I'm sorry to bother you. You are bothering me, but that's okay because you might want something. And if I think you're cute, I'm going to give you my number. And if she makes up a, you know, if she says she has a boyfriend, if she rejects you, if she says certain things that you know, you're not, she's not interested. She's not into it. Then that's fine. Move on. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Orist is in the chat. Creepy is the guy in the comments that always just says beautiful or gorgeous. <laughs> that's hilarious. The only way that you're going to get confident is practice. People like to think that they can think through confidence, but you know what confidence, you know how confidence is made. Confidence comes from 
<clears throat> confidence is made through rejection. So what I mean by that is, is when you were a kid and you were learning about how to be in a social situation, right? The product that shame or the feeling that, that shame allowed you to have, right? The feeling that, oh, that, that probably didn't go well, or that joke didn't, ooh, that joke didn't go over very well. Um, or, or you're in a social situation and you do something and people look at you and you make a fool out of yourself. This has happened. This has happened to all of us, right? So that's actually an evolutionary adaptation from you being in social circles and adapting to your surroundings so that you're able to read people. You're able to be in a social situation without getting outcasted from the group. Telling us not to apologize first is the kind of advice that we need. Sweet. Awesome. Thanks, Dean. Good. I'm glad that's helpful. Um, anyway, so, so you guys, you learn how to be social beings very, very young. We all grow up learning how to be social beings. And you take feedback from people. You see their body language. You see their eye contact. You see how they're reacting to you. And then you, you kind of learn through trial and error. What does it mean to be able to be charming? You know, what does it mean to be able to be sarcastic? What does it mean to be able to poke fun at someone? I used to like over the line go sometimes, sometimes, I mean, me, of course, like go over the line, never all the time. I've, I've made so many mistakes where I thought that I was, cause I grew up with brothers. So me and my brothers would joke about stuff all the time. And then sometimes I would get in my girl circles and I would try and, you know, make funny jokes and they would bomb, they would die. So you take that feedback and you go, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of change a little bit. I'm going to kind of mold myself in different ways. Oh, here's so your audience is socially awkward people who never learned fair points, fair points. So maybe we need to talk about that. Maybe we need to talk about how to have confidence and how to create social, social confidence within yourself. That's a, that's a, that's actually a really good. Oh, I had a guy approach me through my trainer the other day. Very sweet. Yay. That's awesome. Okay. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? I'm talking about confidence. I'm talking about confidence, how you build confidence. Well, first you have to build confidence by doing things that are out of your comfort zone. You have to build confidence by doing things out of your comfort zone. So you know how many nights when I was in my 20s and even early 30s, even now, so many nights where I'm like, I don't want to go out. I don't want to go out to the bars. I don't want to, I, I don't want to sit at the bar. I don't want to like talk to people. Ugh. I just want to stay inside, play on my computer and watch a movie or read a book. That's not how you, that's, you have to get out and be social with people. The bartender has to talk to you. He's serving you drinks. <laughs> He's serving you your meal. So even if you don't drink, even, oh, here's Siri. No Siri. Shut up. I didn't get no Siri. Um, even if, even if you go and, and talk to anybody, yeah. Even hiring a personal trainer. Even hiring a female personal trainer who you have no chance of sleeping with, that is such a good way to get practice with women, talking to women, being around women, having female friends. I know there's like this, I know there's this, con, you know, contra controversy, controversy about male and female having, being friends. I think that's total crap. I think 100% you should be able to have friends and be able to, to be able to get feedback from them. Female friends 
I'm honest with my female friends or with my male friends, 100%. How do we confident, simple, be successful? Failure, wait. How do we confident, simple, be successful? Failure does not build up confidence. It destroys confidence. Um, I actually don't think that's true. Uh, I think that failure, if looked upon as what you could have learned and what you could have done better, is how you build confidence. That's, that is, <clears throat> and then implementing what you learned to move forward to the next one. <clears throat> to the next try or talking to another person or talking to another woman. <clears throat> Sorry, top brass. Yes, as trainer that us trainers at the gym tend to train each other. <clears throat> you know what the termite asked at the bar? Is the bartender here? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> don't tell her. Yeah. Maybe don't tell her you hired her to learn how to act with women. But wouldn't, wouldn't it be Vanessa? How many do you train men? Or do you train more women? That's a good question to ask. I kind of, I'm kind of intrigued now. Failure equals perspective. Yes. How does someone who works as a 911 call handler meet women in person in real life, not online dating world? Guys and girls can be friends. Yes, all about respect. What do you do as hobbies? That's where you meet women. I have friends that are in intramural sports leagues. I have friends that are taking guitar lessons at community college. I have friends that have joined Toastmasters. I have friends that um, go to concerts together. You can meet up at REI. You can meet up at church. You can meet up. You can meet up at a coffee shop. The other day, I had a I have a perfect example of a guy. I don't know. We're friends now. I don't think he was really hitting on me. Um, pickleball is all the rage these days, but so I'm at a coffee shop and I was actually, I was actually on a conference call. So I walked in, this is, this is, this is the, let me tell you this story. This guy was so good and so successful. Granted, he's like 10 years younger than me. So I'm not into the cougar land. I gave him my number he's a good guy. We're friends now. He lives in Vegas. So when I was in Vegas, F1, I don't know if I told you guys this, but I thought I'm going to, I'm like, I'm going to do a video on this because it was so effortless. And he is such a darling. He's actually offered to be in a video with me so that we can talk about this story. <laughs> I was like, you, I have to tell everybody about this because you were so good. Um, so I did not say Coco Puffs, Coco Puffs, pickleball. Okay. So this guy, I go in there. I'm on a mission. I got a conference call, right? I'm at the coffee shop in Vegas. It's called Samba Latte. If you know it, it's, it's a, um, it is a place. Hold on. I'll, I'll get to your questions in a second. Um, it's a place in Summerlin. So I sit down next to a very handsome gentleman. I probably 30 years old. Didn't even think twice about it. He's like, got his headphones in. He's designing some video game or something. And I'm, and I sit next to him, plug my headphones in, get my coffee. And I'm like, all right, I got to talk to my team. I'm in the, I'm in the conference call, right? I'm in over my laptop, doing my thing. Like an hour goes by where I am on my conference call, completely plugged into what is happening. I don't even know what, what is happening over here. He is doing his thing. Conference call is over. I take a breath. I kind of take some notes. And the minute that I finish the conference call, I'd say three minutes later, this guy over to my left, he says, Hey, I'm sorry. No, he didn't say I'm sorry to interrupt. He actually said, Hey, I overheard you talking to your team. And I don't mean to be intrusive, but I was, I was wondering, are you a, a dating coach for men? Or do, do you help them 
you know, build their confidence. Cause, cause I was talking to my team. It wasn't private. I was in a, I was in a uh, coffee shop, so it wasn't private. The conversation that I was having, it was just me having a, a, a call with my team. So then we talked, he just, we just talked for like the next 30 minutes, talked about what I did, how I got out of my, you know, corporate America, how I'm doing my YouTube thing. And he thought it was the coolest thing. He's like, oh my gosh, this is so freaking cool. I can't believe, you know, I'm talking to a YouTuber. He asked me for my number. He texted me uh, about an hour after and said, you know, Connor from coffee would love to meet you at another time or blah, 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 blah. I, I asked him how old he was. I'm like, you're too young for me, but I think you're adorable. Um, I'm okay. I'm good with dating younger men, but let's just, you know, there's like, there's a certain, there's, there's, there's like a, there's a certain age gap where we got to be careful. Um, anyway, that is, it's as simple as that. And he was, uh, he has a you know big old beard. He was not looking any crazy. He wasn't looking crazy. He just had, he just had charisma. I'm telling you, confidence, charisma, you know, just talking to me as a normal person, that's that's what works. So I don't know if that's helpful. Yeah, that is, and that is how you pick up women. It was that simple. And, and I know, but the thing that Connor told me, my, lo my lovely friend, Connor, he's like, I, I used to be terrible with women. I used to be terrible with women. I had a, the hardest time, but he's like, I just kept doing this over and over again. I just kept trying to have conversations with women at coffee shops. And he's so funny. We met at another coffee shop. We met at another coffee shop the next day at, um, in Vegas where I was at mothership in downtown Vegas. And we met at the coffee shop the next day. Cause I wanted somebody to co-work with again, an amazing way to meet somebody and have it be friendly before you're going out on a date with them. So we met the next day and I'm talking to him about all these things and he's talking to me and we're talking about what I do. And, and he's like, watch, I'm going to go. Um, he's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go talk to this other woman. And I'm, and I'm cheering him on. I'm like, yes, Connor. Yes. I'm filming him for, my, for me, like for the YouTube. I'm like, this is how, and he did it. He goes up and talks to women. Brilliant. You guys, it is that easy. And if he gets rejected, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. Okay. And the answer to the age question is how old do I need to be? <sighs> if you want to date an older woman, like 10 years is a little, it's a lot. It's a lot. I think the older woman, older man thing is a little complicated because I don't want to feel like I'm like robbing the cradle. And uh, I don't know. It, this is complicated. It's preference. It's whatever preference whatever preference you want. I tend to date like five or six years either way. I, I don't really tend to date more than 10 years unless there is something, unless there's something about that person that I just think is amazing. Um, I filmed, I did film. I like that guy, Connor. <laughs> we should call him right now. I should, I should bring, at one point we'll do a live together. He is a real person. He's great. Meeting women is easy for some guys, but keeping them around is the hard part. Sometimes it is. I am so good at talking to women now. I can't stop. My wife gets furious. That's hilarious. Would that be persistent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was persistent. Um, simple. Just push all the right buttons without faking it. Yeah. Mm, she says, no, but your body language talking about this guy is saying someone else. No, no, no. I'm just animated. I just wanted to tell you guys the story. No, I'm, I'm just animated. I loved, I, I loved, I love, I love meeting guys who are so confident and who, who are younger and who don't let the Me Too movement, feminism, you know, all the 
social programming that you guys have, I 100% think it is such a bitch. I am not a fan. 100%. You guys know me. I am not a feminist. I don't support that in any way, shape or form, because I think that it has really worked to emasculate men in our culture. So I am not a fan of feminism. I am 100% a fan of, you know, going back to older customs. You know, I heard a, I heard a podcast the other day though, that, that put things in perspective for me. Um, I don't know if you guys listen to Chris Williamson, uh, modern wisdom podcast, but he had a guest on, her name was Louise Perry recently, and she is, I don't really know what her title is, almost like a behavioral anthropologist. She wrote a book called The Case Against the Sexual Revolution. And one of the things that struck me is she said that from an evolutionary standpoint, it is kind of awkward or it is not necessarily customary if we if we think if we look if we look over the thousands of years that we have been in tribes and have been mating that the time period of when men would approach women strangers or talk to women strangers on the street is is kind of low is not it's not very big, our, our time frame for that. A lot of the marriages and a lot of the people that we ended up with from a long-term perspective, we got introduced by friends or we had social circles where we knew somebody. It wasn't just a stranger. Then the internet came along and disrupted that whole pattern completely. So I don't know. I mean, I, I understand that going up and talking to people is almost something that we expect at this point, but I don't really, I, 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 that made me really think like, okay, maybe it's not as natural or as normal as we think it should be. Maybe it kind of, you feel that mortal fear of rejection because that's never really how we were introduced to women or men in the past. Women or men in the past, like you had parties, you know, uh, arranged marriages were, were kind of customary. You met people in church, you know, you had, you had like tentacles out where there was some sort of connection of how you would know someone. So now, I mean, I think this is one of the reasons why modern dating is such a mess is because it is just, it's strangers. You, you have no idea how this person's going to fit into your life. What else? What else? What else? Sarah Dawn, don't forget By Byron. Okay. So Dean telling us not to apologize first is the kind of advice we need. I had a guy to approach. I had a guy approach me through my trainer the other day. Yeah, Vanessa. Question. Should I worry about my plans to move in with my friend who is also divorced and its effect on my dating? Chat even any advice. Should I worry about my plans to move in with my friend who is also divorced and it affects my dating? Um, so I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be brutally honest. Depends on how old you are. That's the question that I need answered first. Yeah, Brian. Brian, chat chat to me how old you are. The problem is that sometimes Brian is 37. Is this going to be a temporary situation? Because temporary is cool. We like temporary. We can do temporary. 37 and having a roommate is a tough Thing to explain unless you live in California, which is why I'm leaving here. I, I clearly don't have a roommate, but, um, a lot of men do <laughs> in California. Uh, so 
because it's very expensive to live here. A lot of men do in New York. A lot of men do in like these. Oh, cool. On TV, on television, I must be big. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of people at 37 who have roommates, that is tough. That's tough. I would, I would advise, I would advise for it to be temporary, but I also understand that your buddy needs a place to live or your buddy needs a place as if he's going through a divorce. And I think that if you phrase it that way to a woman, Hey, you know, I just want to let you know, this isn't going to be a permanent situation or, you know, I'm living with this guy. Um, you know, I think that that would be, it's tough, you know, at 37, I think if you're in your twenties and you're still building, that's 100% reasonable. But I talk about this all the time. You want to have a life that you want to invite a woman back to, like you want to have a life built up. Women want to feel as though you have put in the work to get yourself together, that you have, you know, that you have a job, that you have a career, that you have something going for you. So having a roommate just kind of feels a little bit of a like failure to launch, just feels a little bit like, you know, can you spend time alone? Can you not spend time alone? You know, what kind of a job do you have? How are you paying your bills? How are you managing all of this? It's just kind of a grown up thing to want to live alone. But at the same time, who am I to say? Like, who am I to say that that's a good or a bad thing? It really depends on the woman. Some women have no problem with it. Yeah, cool. I'm glad that helped. Yeah, I have a roommate. He's a brother from church. He needed a place to live. So it's my son, me, and my brother. Totally. I think it's great. I, I think that there's nothing wrong with a roommate situation. I think that you just need to be aware that a woman is not necessarily going to be super happy about it. And the reason being is that if you're intimate, if she stays the night, if something goes on, right. And she wakes up, it's private, right? There's, um, we want to be able to be ourselves in the bedroom. We want to be able to, do the things that we want to do. Um, we want to be able to get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom. And it's, it's like kind of, it's awkward when you get up and there's other people and they know that you just got it on. They know that you just did it. And that's what you do in college. <laughs> that's what you do. You're like, Oh, walk of shame, you know? Oh, but when you're an adult, like, I don't, we don't want to do that. We don't want to have any walk of shame or any kind of awkward, like, okay, I'm in my nightgown and I'm seeing other men. It just feels, it's like our safety, right? Women want, definitely want to feel, definitely want to feel um, just privacy. That's all. We're already giving you our, our kind of our, uh, our privacy in general, we're, we're trusting you with that. And so having, having other men that are strange men that we don't know very well causes us to feel a little bit awkward, unsafe. I feel you guys. I feel you guys. That's yep. That's what I pay in California for a one bedroom. Thank you very much. Two bedroom. I would love to pay that for a two bedroom. It's, it's insane. I agree. Want privacy. Yes, yes, yes. Awkward 1200. That's nearly my entire disability check for rent. That is, yep. That's rent is no joke nowadays. Oh, this is good. It's important for a man to be good at reading the woman's reactions and body language. That way you can tailor your approach on the fly. So you are perceived as fun and not creepy or a jerk. Yes. I mean, again, this goes to like testing for interest, testing for 
open doors is what Dr. Glover calls it. Uh, ironically, when you move in together with your with your partner, you now both have roommates. That's funny. Very expensive these days for rent or mortgages. I don't know if roommates cannot be an option for most. Trust me. Yeah, trust me. I get it. That's one of the reasons why I'm I am moving because of that situation. I don't. I'm not interested in paying four thousand dollars for a two bedroom apartment. Hello. Are you kidding me? That's a mortgage. That's a, that's a huge house, huge house for $4,000. What? Ridiculous. Why are these places, why are these cities so expensive? Plus, once you get a certain age, you don't want to be confined to just the bedroom only. Yes, Vanessa. Totally true. <laughs> yeah, yes. It's like the it's like a cage. You're just in the bedroom. No, you want to be all over the place. Like women want to be naked, walking all over the place. Or we want to be in our nightgown. You know, we don't we don't want to be like covered up in a robe. Yeah, just awkward. Oh, that's awesome. 500 bucks a month. Would you go on fresh and fit again? No, absolutely not. I want nothing to do with them. They are not healthy people. They're not, it's not that I wouldn't go on fresh and fit again. I actually don't mind them. Uh, I, I don't mind who they are. I, I think that they are, I think they have major attachment issues, but the problem with going on fresh and fit is that they, they only want to have a conversation that is with bumpers on the bowling alley. They only want you to talk about certain things. They don't want you to talk about deeper things. So I would 100% bring my colleague with me next time, attachment Adam, it would be me and him. And we would talk about attachment issues that men are facing and how to fix them. But unfortunately, I, I I don't think that fresh and fit are ready to have that conversation. I don't think that they are able to, you know, they, they don't want to have that conversation. And they were very kind to me after the episode. You know, they were nice. You know, they invited me back. They said, if you know, if you know, I, I said to them, <laughs> I said to them, <laughs> I said, Please don't insult my intelligence next time by inviting me on this show with all these other women where I cannot have an intelligent conversation with a mouse. And they said, we understand you got a little bit of a different crew tonight. Women that had never been on the show before women that were not necessarily the most emotionally intelligent women. And they were young. I made a joke. I called myself auntie. I know you guys watched it. If you there, if you were there and you watched it, I called myself auntie. I'm like, I'm the auntie here and I'm ready to give you guys some advice. But the problem is that every time I tried to have, it's like, they're just so combative. They're so combative with women. And I just, I'm like, I'm not, this is, I don't want to be combative. I want to have an intellectual stimulating conversation with you guys. But if you can't do that, if you're just going to fit me into the mold with all the other women, then, then we can't talk. We can't get to know each other. Like we can't discuss certain things that I want to discuss because you're just, you're just going to clump me in with all the other women. So once I got through the show, the four hour show also on rumble, you know, not just the YouTube, that's the one that you guys saw, but then I got into rumble and it was even more annoying. I just said, you guys like, why don't we talk about stuff that's meaningful? But unfortunately their, their channel does not lend to having intellectual stimulating conversations with women. It just doesn't. That's not what they do. That's not what they do. Their, their, their channel is Jerry Springer for, for red pill. For my area it was all the Californians fleeing and driving up the prices. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Eric, damn, 41, house paid off, retired. Good on you, sir. <laughs> oh, 
No, not me. I don't know what. I love drying off. Are you kidding me? My hair? It'd make a mess if it was dripping all around the house. Adam and Sarah versus the fresh and fit. That would be great. I'd love to do that. Your expertise is not their content. Absolutely. You would do better where they interview in one on one format. I would love, like I said, I would love for my colleague and I to go back on that show. I think it would, I think once we get our podcast up and going. And by the way, thank you. We have a thousand subscribers so far. We we are making inroads. Go go see our podcast. I wish you knew. We only have four episodes launched out of 20, but we are very happy. It's making it's podcasts are very, very slow to launch, like very slow to launch. Um they they take a long time to build. So this is like four years in the making. <laughs> But I think that, you know, a year or two from now, it would be really interesting for my, for, for Adam and I to go on that show and, and have a very, very good intellectual conversation. With Adam and Sarah versus Fresh and Fit, that would be a great show. I think it'd be a fantastic show. I agree too. I think it'd be hilarious and it would be around too. And I think that Trust me, once Adam and I get this podcast going and once we go, that's a good idea. I, I'll, I'll, tell my, I'll tell my team that. I won't go on that show unless Adam goes with me. Sorry, we got off topic. Five things to create desire within women. That's okay. <laughs> um, I emailed you the text that she sent. Thanks for the insight. I will look at it. Okay, cool. I'll definitely look at it. Okay. Well, it's kind of, we've covered a lot of some of the things that that we've talked about that was the topic, the five things that create desire for a woman. Um, we talked about anticipation, creating emotional connection, being present without judgment, being present without being in your head. We didn't talk about something that I think that a lot of you guys don't do that that you guys should do more of. Let me, and let me see what the girls think about this. Um, so Vanessa and some of the, and Katie and some of my girls that watch me, I love you guys. You're so loyal. I love it. So one of the things that you guys don't do is you don't talk about sex before sex happens. That is another way to create desire with a woman. So Sometimes you guys just go straight in for the jugular versus saying, Hey, so can I ask you something personal or can we talk about, can we talk about what you like before, before you have sex, <laughs> like before you do it, when you're fully clothed and you're sitting on the couch again, guys like don't want to be creepy or they don't want to come across as, as invading her privacy. Several people are asking about approaching coworkers. No, I think, I mean, hold on. I actually don't think there's anything wrong with it. Let's talk about sex in a second. You gotta, you gotta test for interest though. You can't just go into a coworker and, and like you, you have to, to, to test if she's interested. Hold on. I'm hungry. I'll take a bite. <laughs> this is hilarious. Not what I meant. Not what I meant. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my gosh. Not what I meant. <laughs> Did you guys see that? <laughs> she takes a zip of her coffee. So are you into butt stuff? <laughs> I'm 
blushing. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Okay. But do you see like, do you see what you just did there? Do you see what just happened? <laughs> Sarah, don't joke. I mean, <laughs> seriously, what a way to like, oh, here comes Siri. No, Siri. I didn't ask you a question. Stop. Away, Sarah. No, I didn't ask. Oh my gosh. Humor. See, do you guys see what just happened? That's charisma. That's funny. That is, I mean, cause it's obviously, okay. He, okay. He just did something. I, this is good teaching. I'm on a roll tonight. I want to stop and show you what he just did. Okay. So when it comes to charisma, there's many different levers that you can pull. And one of the reasons why comedians are perceived to be so charismatic is because they take a normal subject or you're, they will take a joke and they will make it so outlandish. They'll, they'll like go too far. So it's, it's funny. You can't help but laugh because that's something that like uh, Jimmy Fallon would say, or, or, or Pete Davidson, you know, she takes a sip of her coffee. Are you into this? And, and it would like make you spit out your water because you're like, well, for some women, if some women don't think that's funny, then I think get out. Like there's square, get, get out of here. There's, there's like, that's dumb. Then, you know, the type of personality that you're working with from as far as a woman goes, like, you know, that that isn't a woman that has a sense of humor. So get the, get the F out of here. Like I have a sense of humor. I thought it was hysterical. Most women would find that funny. So you guys, you gotta, you gotta be less serious, right? Less serious, making conversations that have a serious topic that are, are about something serious. Go shoot for the moon and, and say something like that. It, extremely hysterical. Anyway, I just, okay. What else? What did I miss? I bet you do, Orist. I could definitely see that you, you probably do. Yeah. Say stuff like that. I know series, series, like she's, I can't not don't come up again, Siri. It's important not to take yourself too seriously. Yes. I did that once. We were only a few months in our relationship. She completely loved up on me. She might have some trauma or something. <laughs> Someone clipped that. I might have to clip that later when I go watch this back. That was, I, I could make a whole video about that, that, that whole thing about how to talk, how to bring up sex, how to talk about sex, right? Like how to, how to bring it up without it not being so awkward, but that's another, that's another way to create desire with women is talking about sex before you've ever, before you even do it, talk about what you like, talk about the positions, talk about things that you know, you enjoy, maybe not talk about past experiences or things that you've done with other people that might get a little awkward, but I just, I don't think that you guys in general, I think, you know, men and women, I don't think that we talk about things like that as much as we should. And it actually can turn, it can really turn a woman on because when because because women are all mental, right? Women are mental. We we think about it. If we talk about it, then if you're there, then if you're there and you're with us and you're present, it's that energy typically has to go somewhere. That that energy, that sexual attraction, if she's into you and if she's feeling it, it it's it it elicits something. It elicits definitely um some foreplay foreplay people think it's all about you know physical touch and creating a sense of anticipation and all these things you have to do from a physical touch perspective no i think 
I think you need to kind of take away the shame of talking about it. And it's, it's, it's a huge turn on. Uh Oh, what did I miss? What did I miss? What did Holly say? On our first date, I said to William, drink till I'm pretty. <laughs> That's cute. That's adorable. Another thing that you guys need to do is you need to lead the dating process. Stop giving women options. Stop, stop asking them where they want to go. Stop, stop with the options, especially when you first start dating a girl. She, she doesn't really care. She wants, give her two or three options. Tell her what kind of, what kind of things to wear. This is, you know, this is a type of attire. This is where potentially, you know, two places that you're going, pick one. Just, I, I don't know how many times I have to say this and I still have guys ask me where I'm going to go. And I'm like, oh my gosh, just come, just tell me. All I want to do is put my makeup on. You give me the address, you give me the time and I will be there. Just plan the date. Um, oh yeah. And then the last one was being non-apologetic and charismatic. That's it. Those were the five things that create desire for a woman. Anticipation, emotional connection, being present without judgment, asking thoughtful and meaningful questions such as what do you, you know, asking questions such what, what are you proud of? What do you want to brag to me about? What are something that you wish that you could do with a partner? What is something that is missing for you in your life that you've been waiting to do with a partner? Questions like that. It's tough because guys don't ask, again, guys don't ask these types of questions <laughs> to each other. I was told to always give girl options, another nice guy trait. No, two options at best. That's it. Two options. Not anymore. Yes, yes, yes. Nice, Vanessa. I know Vanessa's got my back. We're going to have a... At some point, we're going to have a live event and we're all going to get to meet and I'm going to get to see you guys' face beyond these little tiny, these little tiny screens where I'm only seeing half of your face. How long have you been off parole? First date, sex is not in the date. Sex, sex happens a lot. I don't know what, I mean, you're, you might be getting lucky on the first date. That's. I wouldn't talk about sex on the first date. I would wait. <laughs> I would wait for a little bit. <laughs> I would wait. I would wait till like date. Well, just, just feel it out. You got to wait, wait. You know, if you've been intimate, if there's been making out, if there's been kissing, if there's been, you know, if there's been like other things happening, then I would definitely, you know, talk about it like that. I would definitely start to bring it up. You got to feel out the intimacy when it comes to women and like not rush the process. Okay. What other questions? Let me get. I did. And that was 35 years ago. Met in DFW. Like what other questions do my members have? What other questions do we have? Do we ha oh, do we have some coworker questions? Is that what I was hearing? Yeah, sex is way too uncomfortable on the first date. I'm not really a fan. I don't I don't think I don't I think that's like a myth that women who have high sexual desire for you will sleep with you soon and early. Not not really actually. They really have to feel comfortable and safe. There has to be an like a serious environment for them to want to get naked with you. Oh, 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 oh. Talking about dating coworkers. Okay. How you date a coworker is actually not that hard. I think it's, it's a slippery slope, but I think a lot of people were meet at work. I believe it's about 15 to 20% of people that 
meet at work. I am an INFJ. INFJ. I'm a INFJ, pretty sure. Or ENFJ. I don't know. I forget. I took it at some point. Um, so I would, I would go out to happy hours with groups or I would place yourself in their vicinity, try and get lunch together, try and create moments where you can connect outside of a project that you're working on. Like try and do things to kind of get time with the other person to see ENFJ. That's what I am. Yeah. Only if it's within direct. Yeah. I wouldn't date somebody that reported to you. That's not worth it. That You could lose your job by doing that. I would definitely have something lined up. <laughs> if you were dating somebody that was reporting to you, that's the, yeah, that's a slippery slope. Um, Yeah, but but there's a lot of people that can get married who are their coworkers. So I'm not going to say that it's a good or a bad thing, honestly. I'm going to say be careful. Don't shit where you eat. But at the same time, people get married. People get married from, from working for work situations. I would say see if you can get to her through a group interaction. You can be flirty. You can... You know, you can kind of nudge and see how things go, see if she's flirtatious back. But you want to do a lot of testing for interest. You want to see how she is before you go and make things awkward. Because if then if she shuts you down, you want you want to also befriend uh, one of her coworkers that's a female to see if you can get in that way. You want to get some information. I can't tell you how many guys would befriend me to get to another girl. Hey, yo, yo, yo. Like, especially when I was younger and I was working in the bars, put myself through college, um, put myself through school and then talking, they would come up to me and Hey, like, what's, what, what's this girl? What's this girl's issue? Like, what's going on here? Can, can you help, you know, can you introduce me or can you kind of help get me in or, and then you just kind of go from there. You just kind of go from there. You just kind of see how things are. You see if she's flirtatious. You see if she, you know, kind of touches you, flirts back, creates opportunities. She wants, she's going to make it easy for you. But try and befriend one of her coworkers because girls talk about everything. And the easy way is to talk to her coworker and say, yo, I want to, I want to, I want to talk to your friend. Can you help me out and make sure you could trust her. And she will then let the other girl know, cause we, ha we have a secret sisterhood society that that's what we do. We, we, you know, that's what we do. I'd be like, yo, John wants to take you out. Um, it's great to have a wing when I had another guy the other day. I'll, I mean, I have, a, I have a wing man. He's actually a good friend of mine, John. He picked up a guy for me and I didn't, I didn't do anything. He literally just went over there and said, my friend thinks you're cute. Why don't you come over and talk to her? <laughs> and, that's what he, and it worked. I'm like, huh. it happens. Try, try and Try and go in that way. I'm a former firefighter, so dating a co coworker wasn't really an option. Yeah, that's awkward. That could be an awkward uh, situation. Being in the sleep same same sleeping quarters as the other person. Yeah. Yikes! Yikers. Uh, bye, Brian. I have a question for you. What's the best way to make a woman feel safe? I mean, I think this is dependent. This is this is dependent on. Each woman is going to feel different about what safety means for her. Safety means your words and your actions align. Simple as that. Your words and your actions align. If you say you're going to do something, follow through. If you, if you say that you want a relationship, then then be consistent with your communication. 
Um, it really depends on the woman, but I would ask her what safety means for her. I'm so surprised at why so many guys are afraid to ask a woman this question. I don't think I have, I, I can't tell you the last time I had a guy ask me that question. What does safety look like for you? And I would say, it looks like me not guessing how you feel about me. It looks like us seeing each other consistently. It Well, actually, I will say, no, I will say that I had a boyfriend that asked me this question. He was a dad. He was very mature. This was about a year ago. And um, he had kids. The kids got in the way. It was complicated. But um, we talked about that very early on. And, and I asked for a certain amount of communication, you know, when we were dating, there was just certain things that we, that we negotiated on. And he's like, I can give you this. I can't give you that. You know, I can, you know, I'm going to, I can't text you during the day, but I'll text you when I get home. I mean, he was so communicative and that is really the essence of making a woman feel safe. Ask her what she needs to feel safe. And she will tell you. You know, when we get into arguments, I don't want to go to bed angry. I don't, I want to talk it through. I don't want to, I don't want to have tension. I want there to be, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. So that, that worked, that worked. It's just asking me. And then during, during the conflict, or if something came up also, you could ask what, what, what would make you feel safe right now? And sometimes I would say, you know, reassuring me that we're going to be okay, that this is just a fight that we're having. Good night, Vanessa. You know, sometimes a woman will tell you, yeah, it's like sometimes if we're having a fight and you're closing up or you're going somewhere and, and like, I don't, I can't tell what is happening if you need a break, if we're, if we're talking about something and you're emotionally overwhelmed, stuff like that, where, Hey, I got to take a 10 minute break. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be back. I want you to feel safe in this conversation, but I need to calm down. So just ask a woman what would make her feel safe. Eight years in, Holly and I have never fought. That's beautiful. I would love a relationship like that. I can't stand fighting. I'm so over it. That's like a dream to be in a relationship like that. I was like, I am, I'm fighting is like ugh, the last thing I'm I would really want in a relationship. Oh, thanks, Wyatt. That's very sweet. Hmm. Listening to Sarah for me is learning a new language. So much of what is said goes over my head, but I keep coming back to get better. That's awesome. <laughs> what? What? What did I miss? Vanessa, get back here and talk about butt stuff with coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a risk. It is a risk for sure. But it depends on the job too. Depends on the job, you guys. If it is a huge corporate job and you're making six figures or 200,000 bucks and you can't risk your livelihood, yes, probably not the best idea. Or if, or if she can, if she leaves and gets another job, or if it's like you got to have a backup plan if something goes wrong. <laughs> if, so, if, in, if you're serious. Flirted with my coworkers. We, I, I, are you kidding me? Flirted all the time. We, and they were single. We were single, and it was fun. And and we didn't, you know, we didn't hook up. But I definitely think that there can be some coworker relationships that 100% can be successful. Just be careful. Go slow. Go super slow. Super slow. Aww. That's going to make me cry. You guys, we're just starting here. This is just the beginning. 
in a couple months, I'm going to have a whiteboard. I'm going to be able to teach like really deep concepts about attachment and about psychology and about all the things like we're going to, it's just, we're just starting. This is my first year doing this. Like we haven't even started this yet. <laughs> Define slow. <laughs> That's funny. You can flirt with coworkers. You will end up in the human resources office. Not if it's mutual. Not if she's flirting back. Not if she's flirting too. Harmless flirting is great fun, great release of endorphins. Oh, night, night, everybody. Oh, yeah, 100%. In the service industry, that's flirting is like, that's like language. That's the English language in the service industry. 100%. It's terrible. Everybody sleeps with everybody in the service industry. I was a I was a bartender and a cocktail waitress for years. I didn't sleep. I had a boyfriend all throughout college. So, I didn't I didn't I didn't do that cuz I was taken, but it was yeah, talk about incestual and in, in that industry. Woo. It's crazy. Okay, so ENFJ, dominant extroverted feeling, auxiliary introverted intuition, tertiary, tertiary is extroverted, extroverted sensing and introverted thinking. That's about right. Sounds about me. That sounds about me. <laughs> Ted, I'm still live. I like it. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. View on sexual harassment. Where are you from? I'm from, my family's from uh, 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 Cuba. My family's uh, uh, Spanish oriented, but my dad's Irish. I'm originally from Arizona. What else? She's the opposite of me. ISTP. You guys, I don't even know all these ENFJ weird things. I have no idea what, what do you think about open relationships? I don't think about them at all. I don't think that they're great. No, don't take a personality test. I'm not, I don't think that they're super valuable. I speak un poquito espanol, very little, but I do speak it. I can more hear it versus speak it. I My mom speaks to me in Spanish all the time and I'm like, what? Yeah, she's, yeah. I definitely, I definitely pick up about 65% of it. <laughs> You have to really, you have to really speak it fluently and, and your parents, my mom, I wish you would have spoke. My dad watered down the gene pool. My mom couldn't speak Spanish with my dad. So I thought I was the only Irish Cuban who lived in Houston. Huh? No, I lived in Houston too. ENFJ is the most introverted extrovert. The Yes. Okay. So you know what? Maybe there is something to these personality tests. Um, why can't open relationships be a good thing? I know many people who are happy sex with one person gets old after a while. I don't think there's anything wrong. Okay. Let me correct myself. I don't think that there's anything wrong with an open relationship. It's just not for me. I think that you can get novelty from sexual experiences within a relationship such as going to a strip club, such as going to, I mean, there's sex clubs, there's other places, there's going to Amsterdam. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Amsterdam. Um, I went to the red light district when I was, I don't know, maybe 25 when I was doing all my traveling. I, I traveled the world. I've traveled the world. I traveled through Europe uh, and uh, went to Amsterdam. If you, if you, if you, don't know what the red light district is. It is a place. It's a street, almost like Vegas, where there are opportunities for hire. <laughs> um, and you can create a lot of 
um, new experiences without having to, uh, to, to step outside of a relationship. Once again, if you find someone who is open to that, to that lifestyle, I have no judgment towards that. I just am saying personally, it is not something that I think about or not something that I necessarily, um, think that I could do just because I'm, I'm just very, uh, I'm very private. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I don't know. I just, I would freak out. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a very jealous person. I'm very like, if you're my man, that, that there ain't nobody getting in the way of that. That's, and I, and I think that that's very evolutionary. I think that that that's goes back a long period of time. Um, granted I haven't been married for 20 years, so my view on all that could change, but I don't think it will. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's really preference and something that you have to talk about and be very comfortable with when it comes to what you want to do with another woman. opportunities for hire. No, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I'm going to get banned on YouTube if I say something. Yeah. I don't want to share ever. Yeah. Most women, most women would have a very hard time with sharing. It, it, it's not in our nature. It's not in our DNA. Oh, I'm eating salmon. Sorry guys. I'm eating dinner. Mm. <laughs> Jason, Jason, don't know a lot of women that like a man who's slinging D all around town. I have far ends of the spectrum with marriage. First marriage was 14 years plus five years prior. Second marriage, 89 days. Damn, that is different, isn't it? 40% of men cheat and I think 30% of women cheat. I mean, but I think that, I think that the reason why people cheat is because of, they have attachment issues that they're, that they haven't dealt with, not because they want novelty in the relationship, but this is a controversial subject and we can go a lot into it. We should do a podcast episode that talks about attachment and cheating. A lot of people have, have intimacy issues, real deep intimacy, intimacy issues. So if you look at the history of, of people that cheat, a lot of times you will find, uh, some, they typically have some trauma within their background. They typically have a little bit more of a, an avoidant attachment style, which means that they kind of, they crave space. They crave, uh, novelty. They crave excitement outside of their primary relationship. Um, and a relationship feels a bit too safe for them. So they struggle with intimacy and then they find other ways to get their needs met outside of a relationship because they have avoidant attachment style. It happens all the time. So that's, I, I think that people who typically have pretty safe attachments don't necessarily need to go outside of the relationship. Do you see a similarity in attachment issues between open relationships and throuples? Yeah, I do. I think that a lot of people who have open relationships and who are throuples have a hard time attaching to their primary relationship. They have, they have some pretty deep intimacy issues. I think that intimacy is very overwhelming for people who come from attachment trauma. It's hard to, it's really hard to explain without coming across as judgmental. Um, but a lot of people have these deactivating strategies and one of them is cheating one of them is stepping out of a relationship because they, they seek novelty. 
People with attachment traumas, a lot of times they seek novelty. Um, they seek comfort outside of a relationship. Uh, what about dating a smoker? Dessert for you, dear. Just judge. Um, cheating is a spiritual issue, not at peace and it's self-centered. Yeah, I've never cheated. It's not my thing. I've never cheated on anyone before. I never could. I, I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't even imagine the guilt. Okay. I, one time I kissed a guy when I was in Europe and I was 21 years old and I had a boyfriend back at home. I felt so guilty. It was at a bar. I was drunk. I'm not going to lie. This was like 20 years ago. And I called him the next day and I told him because I felt so guilty. He's like, okay. He's like, you couldn't, have you shouldn't have told me, but fine. <laughs> like, it was, it was so dumb, but I felt so guilty. That's the, that's the last time I'd ever cheated in my life. First and last. I don't know how people deal with the guilt. I don't know. I, I, I literally, I left the bar. I was in Italy and I was so drunk off a of limoncello. And this guy made out with me. I left the bar because I was so, I felt so guilty. I walked home in Italy by myself, not safe, not the right thing to do <laughs> as a woman in your twenties. Oh my gosh. I'll never forget that night. I literally had to walk my guilt off that I, I felt so guilty. Yeah. That's. That's how I handle that situation. It's called being human, Sarah. Yes, I, I am human. And I was human that night for sure. Can't believe I did that. What's up, Rev? Rev artist. Yes. He's in the house. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? Went from a kiss to making out. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was, I don't remember. I was 20 years old. Europe is, Europe is to women what Vegas is to dudes. Interesting. Okay, that's fair. Oh, how are you not married? I don't know. Well, we're working on it. That's, that's, that's the goal. That's the plan. But you can't rush these things. You got to wait for the right person, you guys. It's so funny. I get this question all the time. And I was thinking about it today as I got, I get it, I get it at least once a day. And my answer to that is, you know, you can't just go and pick off a husband off the husband tree. You can't just go in and, and be like, oh, I'm going to go pluck me a husband. It takes, you know, it, I was engaged. I've been in relationships. There's been circumstances that haven't worked out. They had kids. I was in a job. I was moving. I was traveling. I was moving all around the country, you know, with my job. Now things are a bit different. I'm definitely ready to settle down, but you got to take, like, I'm taking my time, taking my time, finding the right person. And I date, I do, I do all the things that you do. And it's, it's not like beautiful, you know, like you guys think that beautiful women have all of the options in the world. Yeah, we do have options, but you also, I'm just not going to like marry anybody. Marriage is for life for me, for life. I like, it is not an option to opt out of marriage. So you really Oh, you're 37. I thought you were 27. Thank you. No, yes, I'm a little bit older than that. Oh, always ask a woman somewhat insulting type question. That's a good, that's a good call. Yeah, I don't get insulted by it. I just answer it back honestly. I talk to her about all I've done, and boom, my wife has been cooking and cleaning for me. Okay. Good for you. Good for you, ref. What, well, what did you tell her? What did you tell her that you've done? What does that mean? 
Legal marriage is a bad deal for men though. Not unless you sign a prenup and legal marriage actually would be worse for me because a lot of times I make more money than the men I date. <laughs> so, so let's not talk about that because it's actually just as it's, it's just as throught for women who do very well financially. I, I actually dated a guy who wanted me to pay off his student loans. If you can believe that. He's like, no, if we get married, my $80,000 is your $80,000. I'm like, oh, really? I'm sorry. What? My schooling cost $2,500 because I went to a state school and chose not to have debt graduating college. Thank you very much. But no, my job is not to pay off your college debt. So that's how that went down. So you guys think it's all just happening to you. It is not just happening to you. There's many men who think that women who are successful get to pay off their debt. LOL, 80K is cute, medical school. <laughs> I did drop him pretty fast. <laughs> is that justification for leaving the relationship? No, not at all. It wasn't, that wasn't the reason that we, that him and I didn't work out. I'm just saying... Um, I'm just saying that that was something that came up within the relationship. Sorry, I have to ban someone. Hold on. What are top five questions to create depth in the connection? I'm not interested, but if you want a kid, I'll sell you some seed. That's so funny. Um, now I get free seed offered to me pretty much every day. So I'm okay. I could have a kid anytime I wanted. Not really my, not really my jam to be a single mom. That would make my dating life equally harder. <laughs> like, yeah, that wouldn't go over very well with that. No, thanks. I'm good. Um, okay. So questions. Um, that's okay. It's fine. I, I banned him. She's had a fear because of prior hurt and was scared. If I was head of house, I gave her that because of her fear, but I told her all that was done. I am the man, not her. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. She'll respect that. A woman respects that. Bradley says, listen to what she says and then ask a follow-up. You always want to ask the why question. Why? Why? Why did you do that? I was listening to a podcast today by, by somebody and it was, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful way to create a deeper connection. And I, and I actually wanted to use it for one of my, one of my short form videos that I, that I put out. Um, one of the guys said, um, what did he say? He was just talking, oh, the guy was talking about League of Legends or something. He, he, you know, he was like, don't ever play League of Legends. It's this game. It's that game. It makes you get hooked. It makes you do all these things. And, and the interview, the interview question, the interview guy said, well, well why is that? Why, why, why not play this game? Or, you know, just sometimes you just guys got to just ask, like, why? What? How? Why? What was it like for you growing up as a kid? Tell me about what it was like for you in high school. Were you were you the cheerleader? Were you the nerd? Were you the girl in band camp? When did you blossom as a as a woman? You know, just just you want to ask questions that somebody has an open-ended answer to that can tell stories. You know, when did you go to Europe, Sarah? Like as I'm talking, when when was that? What time period? What's your favorite city in Europe? What was your best memory in Europe? Not the, not kissing another guy. That's for sure. You know, the limoncello was pretty good. It was pretty good. But I mean, I've gone to Mallorca. I've gone to Germany. I've gone to Budapest. Like I have traveled everywhere. South Africa. What's been your, what's, what was the most memorable experience? I could talk about that for ages. That's how you create an emotional connection with a woman. It's just having banter back and forth conversation and, and 
asking questions that you're that you're actually interested in. Don't just ask them to ask them. Ask questions that will actually lead you to her telling you a story or vice versa. How can I pass that up? How can you pass? What did I miss? How can I pass what up? Oh, 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 the the guy, <laughs> the guy offering me his seed. <laughs> oh, that's so kind of you. I have guys offering me, me their seed all the time. That's so great. Single dad with kids is tough. It is tough. I've dated single dads with kids. It's tough. You guys have it rough. That's why I haven't had kids yet. Because I could at any time. You got to make sure that, that that is for real. Legit for real. Good night, Kevin. Oh, I'm so glad that it helped, Rev. Which goes with me saying earlier to approach a woman with curiosity. Oh, that's why. Okay, because he was super passionate about talking about this game. Trying to find that special someone. Get a babysitter. Make sure that you vet the woman very thoroughly before you go out on a date, whether that's text or phone conversation, you don't want to waste your time. That's the last thing that you want to do as a guy who is dating or who's been divorced or whatever. You definitely want to, to really spend a lot of time getting to know that person before you actually go out on a date with them. Cause that's your time. You don't want to waste your time. So I would definitely, I would 100% make sure that you spend a lot of time talking before you actually go out and don't introduce your kids prematurely, even though you want to, or even though you don't have the time, don't wait months before that happens. I also would date other people with kids. I'm a big fan of other people dating other people with kids. Um, ban Ronnie, Ronnie, I'll ban him. Would be happy if you, would you be happy if you were single for the rest of your life? Oh, sure. Yeah. I love being, I mean, I love being single and I love being in a relationship. Happiness is, is, is your state of mind. Happiness is who you are. I think that people, personally, I think that people love, people like being around me because I am happy. I, I don't, I don't need somebody else to complete me and I don't buy into societal norms. I don't buy into this. You have to be married. You don't have to be married. You have to be in a relationship. You don't have to be in a relationship. I don't buy into any of that. Do not rush getting into a relationship with the wrong person. That is, and, and the fact is, is that a lot of us dating coaches are single because we have done so much work from an emotional standpoint. It's hard for us to be with people that haven't done the work that we've done. I've dated, a, I've dated guys who I've sent probably like five guys to therapy. It happens just is what it is. Oftentimes I see I see their trauma before they see it themselves. I work with them and I try to work with them and I try to, I try to help them and kind of provide perspective on a lot of the things I talk about on this channel, as far as attachment issues, as far as kind of how they are presenting in relationships but there's a lot of people that don't want to settle down. There's a lot of people that don't even want to be in relationships right now. The dating market is really crazy. So I have to just hold out and wait till the right person comes along and just be happy. If you can't be happy single there, you don't even deserve to be in a relationship. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to say that like you need to be happy and I'm talking completely happy by yourself.
15 years single. I don't know if I want to go back. Is that a common occurrence after dating you? <laughs> it's a common occurrence before they date me. They just haven't dated a woman who is so emotionally aware. So they meet me and they're like, oh my gosh, you have more knowledge than I've ever had before. I need to go to therapy. I'm like, that's okay. Call me when you're done. <sighs> yeah, a lot of... Oh, thanks, Nick. Yeah, I mean, pigeons... Eagles fly with eagles. That's what my coach says. Eagles fly with eagles and pigeons, pigeons fly with pigeons. Sometimes the eagles find the pigeons and they have to depart because they can't keep up. They can't keep up. I'd love to settle down while you're live. You seem to be an exception to my girls. I'm over it. Late forties married. She left and all her crap stayed. Been a bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Sarah sending men to therapy. Therapy is great for everyone. Everyone should go to therapy. I know what you mean. I only pursue someone who's worth it and earns it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I think it'd be amazing to date you. I love your brain. Thank you. That's very sweet. Very sweet of you. All right, guys. Well, I got to work on some scripts and I got to work on a YouTube um, for tomorrow. Got to do some recording. It's been a blast, a little bit longer than usual. I've had so much fun. We talked about a lot. I can't wait to get into my new studio and get my whiteboard out and be able to, to really go deeper into these subjects. Um, I will definitely look at my email. Most men want a family. Great live. Thanks, Sarah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Had a blast. And I will see you all either later in the week or next week. Thanks, everyone.